Uh, happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Happy Mother's Day to my beautiful wife. And happy Mother's Day to my mom. She's probably watching. And my mother-in-law. Uh, happy Mother's Day to everyone that's here. It's a great day, isn't it? We celebrate mothers. Amen. Mothers, there's, there's you know what, uh, what, what did the sign say, honey? Uh, mothers came before the manual or something like that. Or you know, uh, there was a sign that was, on, you know, the cleaners down in South Florida and Dixieland that always has something. Uh, we drove by there yesterday and they said something like, you know, you, you had a mother before you had a manual. Amen. Uh, you know, and and it's, it's true because your, your mother's what wrote the manual. Who's wrote the manual? Amen. Uh, so, uh, but happy Mother's Day to everyone. I'm going to invite my beautiful wife up. <laughs> So happy Mother's Day. But I, I wanna, we want to start off with a, a, a few things about Mother's Day, just, just to lighten it. Um, you know, uh, kind of some jokes, amen. Uh, it, it just, uh, just, you know, I, I love it. Uh, motherhood, because going to the bathroom in private is overrated. Amen. Isn't that, I mean, isn't that once you become a mother, you're never in the bathroom by yourself. No. Mothers of teens understand why some animals eat their young. Amen, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can, we should be able to get an amen. The two amounts of pasta I'm best at cooking, one, not enough, two, enough for 3,000 people. Amen. Yes. <laughs> it's spicy is a universal mom code for I don't want to share. Amen. Right. It, it's too spicy, honey. It's too, that means you just want it for yourself. Amen. Uh, yeah, these, these are good. These, these are good. Um, mom, what's... It like to have the greatest daughter in the world. I don't know. Ask your grandma. <laughs> oh, silence is golden unless you have kids. Then silence is uh, suspicious. It is suspicious. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But it continues on. We have plenty of jokes if you want more. Uh, here's some of what the celebrities have said. When your mother asks, do you want a piece of advice? It is a mere formality. It doesn't matter if you answer yes or no. You're going to get it anyway. <laughs> That's right. Emma, That's Emma uh, you know, said that. Emma so. Bombeck said that. Yeah. So, but, you know, they also say, you know why a computer um, is so smart? Because it takes instructions from the motherboard. <laughs> amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we're going to jump in. Uh, we're going to jump into the message. Uh, but it, it's, it's good. It's good to have some fun. Um, it's, it, it, it's important that we celebrate mothers. Amen. Yes. Uh, let's face it. Mothers uh, know everything, right? If they don't, Amen. they will have something to say. Yes, they they will. will give some kind of wise counseling right away. Hey, even if they got to come back and, and you know, get with the Lord and then reroute that counseling, they're <laughs> always right. Yes, they are. You know, it says to give honor where honors do, right? I just want to make sure. You know, they're, they're always right. I, they're, read, I read something yesterday that said, grandmas know everything. And if she doesn't know what it is, she will make something up, okay? <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> so, so they do, but, but they know everything. They seems like mothers see everything, right? Yes. They, they seem everywhere. like they hear everything. They could be at the grocery store, and you could be in your bedroom whispering, and you know what? They come home, and the first thing they do is they're heading right to your room. What did you say? How'd you hear that? They really didn't know. They didn't hear that, but you don't know, but you're such in a panic that you just go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. I said this, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Holy it's that, Spirit reveals exactly. Holy Spirit reveals, but mothers, there's just something about mothers that they are incredible. They have yeah. angelic spit. Amen. Yes, that stuff do. disinfects better than Lysol. <laughs> you know, clean it off. I'm just telling you. You know, there's something special about mothers. Amen. I, I, I love the list that that I saw uh, yesterday. There was a, a list that we was going through, and the list of questions for mom is, you know, when's dinner? When school? Uh, what do I wear? Uh, where's dad at? How do I do uh, this? Where, where's, where's uh, you know, um, uh, do I have to clean my room? Why this? Why that? Well, where are we going? Where, it was just a whole list of questions. Yeah. And then the only question for dad is, where's mom? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? They're the encyclopedias. They're the dictionaries. They're the bond. They're the glue. They're, they're, they're the infrastructure. Amen. Amen. And they're the ones that gave birth. Yes. That carried a baby around yes. and gave birth. Gave you hope. Gave you all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So mothers are, are very significant. And, and I want us to, to take a look that they, they, they are special in many ways. 
And we want to give honor. And it says in Exodus 12, 20, it says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So it's a commandment that we need to honor our mothers and our fathers, right? Yeah. And I love the fact that it didn't give any, any reasons why or, or why not, right? Yeah. If they love you today, then that means you honor. Well, you know, if they don't love you today, then that means you still honor. Or if you, you don't like them today, you still honor, right? Yeah. I, I love the fact that it's not even an option. Yeah. We give honor. Yeah. We give honor. They carried you for how many months? Come on. They're nursing you for how many months? Yes. They love you unconditionally. Uh, that that you, you are a part of them, that you yes. came out of them. Uh, there's something special about a mother, and, and we need to give honor. I don't care where you stand with your relationship. I don't care what the situation is. You know what? Biblically, if you can't honor your yes. father and your mother, then you're, uh, you're, you're not biblical. Biblically well, w- following it's, your, it's you know, God's only, word. It's the only commandment with a promise, the right. Bible says. That if you honor your father and your mother, that you will live a long life. And I use it as a weapon. I tell my son, do you want to live a long life? You need to honor me. Like, I use it. I use it to my advantage. You want to live a long life? You need to honor mommy right now. Because, you know, these kids. But it's not using it when it's God's word. This is what God (laughs) says. Give honor, right? Yes. And it's important. And and you're right. It is. It's the commandment that, you know what, if you want long life. Yes. Who doesn't want long life? I mean, yeah, we're all ready to go home and be with the Lord, but we choose, we really like to be here as long as possible. Amen. Mm -hmm. So we need to give honor. We need to give honor. And there's honor and respect. And, And it says within Proverbs 31, it says, her children rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. There's something about a beautiful mother. And it's something about a beautiful mother that just loves the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. And and we can see within the Bible all kinds of mothers. Amen. We see all kinds of mothers. And and we're just going to touch on some of the mothers within the Bible and and some of the things about mothers and and some of the great, you know what, characteristics and attributes about mothers. Because I don't know about you, but I know all mothers are patient. Amen? (laughs) You might not think as a mother you are, but believe me, you are because uh, you know why? Your offspring's still alive. (laughs) So all mothers are patient. Amen? (laughs) I've seen it. I've seen it way too many times when I'm already losing it and she's like calm and patient and everything else. And you know what? Just calm down. Calm down. What do you mean? Come here, boy. (laughs) You know, I but they are patient. They're patient just not with kids, but just with family and life and friends and situations. And, and so mothers are patient, yeah. Yeah. patient as well. I mean, so and we can go within the scripture and we can see one lady that is patient. And this lady is what? Sarah. Abraham's wife. Mm-hmm. Amen. Can anybody relate what she's went through? The difficulties I can't provide a, a child for my, my husband. Um, everyone else seems to be providing for him. Yeah. He has all kinds of kids. And, and you know what? Here, here the Lord says that, you know what? I, I'm, we're going to be blessed. And, and there's going to be generations. It, it says here in Genesis 2. It says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has, to, as he has said. And the Lord did the, for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in what? His old in his age. old age. At the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Mm -hmm. Just think of the patience. Just think of the things that she had to go through. Think of it. She she trusted God. I mean, sometimes um, being a mother, you just have to trust and that's in a very difficult place sometimes. You have to trust the Lord, and that calls for us to be patient and, and trust what God said. Because in, in the scripture, it also says that she laughed about her promise. And sometimes we're like, okay, God, I have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> it sounds so bizarre as to the little steps that I'm taking right now into that direction that you're calling me to. And she laughed at God when he told her that she was in a bare child. And so we can sometimes smirk and laugh at God, but if God said it, that settles it. That's it, and we have to be patient and endure. 
right? Well, and just the other side of the thing is, you know, what? how many times would fathers, uh, okay, we're fixers, right? You know, there's an issue, there's a problem, we got we to gotta dive right in, and, but the mothers are, are patient. Uh, why don't we wait for God? Yes. Are, are you, did you go pray? Well, I went to the garage. Well, did you pray? Well, I went to fix it. Did you pray? No, I didn't pray. Are you yeah. waiting on God? Are you patient? Are you, you know, you know, there, there's things that, that's different characteristics that, that they're des, were designed differently. And, and I, I love the, the fact that mothers are very patient. Amen? Uh, they don't give up. Amen? Right. They're very patient. You know, they're, they're, they allow the fruit to, to come to full, um, you know what, um, maturity. Yeah, and I love the fact that, that you know what, that, that they are patient because how many guys would go to cut the tree down? Mm-hmm. That thing ain't producing. Yeah. No, no, give it some time. Wait. Yeah. The kids are going to be developed. The kids are going to be okay. The kids are going to be turned around. The kids are going to be serving God. You know what? We're waiting for God's promises in the finances. We're waiting for God's promises yes. in healing. We're waiting for God's promises. It, mothers are patient, aren't they? Yeah. Amen. And we see this within Sarah. Yeah. How patient she, she was. Can I just point yes. out that the Bible says that he was old? Right. It doesn't say that she was old. Right. I just have to throw that out there. Hey. <laughs> But she was know. waiting patiently in her youthness. Yeah, and she was runner-up, <laughs> let me old. just tell you. She was right there behind. <laughs> well, but we did outlive you. <clears throat> you <know. laughs> but yes, but we see this life of Sarah. And Sarah said in Genesis 2, 21, 6 through 7, and Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Think of the patience yeah. that a mother has. Amen. Just think of your life, the situations in your life, and the patience you're, you're yeah. waiting for God to move. It's not, that doesn't mean that you're not doing your part, but you're waiting for God. Yes. You're waiting for God to move in your life and in your husband's life and in a family friend's life and in your son's life and your daughter's life and in your job or whatever situation. You're patient. Amen? Yes. And, and, and you're patient because you're going to the Lord and, and you're surrendering and giving it to him. Yes. Amen? Which gives patience. Yeah. Uh, my children will follow you, Lord. My children will surrender and humble themselves. I don't know when. It might be of old, but you know what? They will surrender and serve you. Amen. They will be healed and whole. Yes. They will be delivered out of the hands of the enemy. Yes. Uh, the addictions have to go. I'm patient. I'm waiting upon you. Yes. And we see this within Sarah. Amen. Yeah, your words, because you just demonstrated your words will produce life in you to persevere. Right. You're, you're declaring what God said, and that itself produces life in you to continue to be patient and believe the word of the Lord, even though you don't see it. Amen. So we see these characteristics. And, and another characteristic of, of, of mothers are, mothers are what? Believers. Yep, we believe. They're believers. So. They believe when no one else believes. Amen? They can believe and stand whenever no one else can. They believe. Yes. I mean, we, we see this within uh, Rebecca. We see this within her life. You know, it's Genesis 25, 23. And the Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other. And the older shall serve the younger. Uh, she believes. She believed what God said, that there's two nations in that womb. Yes. And they're fighting right now. They're in the midst of a struggle right now. She believed that, that the younger would, would you know, succeed and get the blessing. Amen? Yeah. Uh, she believed. All the way to the point that, that here, Rebecca says, you know what, in Genesis 27, 13. But his mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. Hey, you know what, let, let the curse be on me. Because I believe that God spoke this and he's going to come to pass. It's going to come to pass. What he has spoken is going to come to pass. Yes. I believe what God has said. I believe you're going to be the one that's going to lead the nations. I believe you're the one that's the lineage that many generations are going to come out. Kings are going to come forth. Yeah. You know, she believed. Just not in that, but so many other things. Just think of what your mother believes in. Come on. Just think how many times your mother believes in you more than you believe that's in right. yourself. That's, right. that's yeah. the reason why she seems to be a pain in the neck at times, right? 
She seems to, say, seems to be a hassle. She yeah. seems to be up in my business. But she believes better for me, greater for me, more for me, in me more yeah. than I do myself. Yes. That's why she pushes. That's why yeah. she loves me. Because she knows the potential. Mm-hmm. She knows what she birthed. Yeah. So she believes in what she birthed. That you are going to amount to something. Amen. You are going to be greater than I am. You yes. are going to do mighty things for God Almighty. And, and she Amen. has that belief, a mother does, that, you know, my child, she, he's going to be awesome. She's going to be awesome. You know, I'm just telling you, you know, I believe that God's going to do a mighty work within my children. I believe that God's going to do a mighty work within my home. See, mothers believe. Yes, they do. See, when you have children, you'll understand that there's just certain things that, that are activated, that you endure that you didn't realize you could endure Come on. because you believe. Yes. You believe. God has this. That's good, huh? God's going to move. Yes. God's going to heal. Yes. God's going to deliver. God's going to restore. Yes. God, I'm believing. You know what? And yes. what I'm believing on, it, I'm believing on God's word. That's right. This is what your word says. Mm-hmm. This is what your word says. They believe. Yeah. That's right, honey. That's good. So we have these traits within mothers. They'll believe whenever no one else can believe. That's right. They'll believe in you when you can't even believe on your own dreams. That's right. When you feel like you're broken and you're, you're messed up and, and the only person you know to call because you haven't gone to God first is, you know what, I just, you know, let me go to mom. Yeah. Let me go to mom because she encourages, uh, yeah. right? She, she exhorts. Uh, she, she builds confidence up in you. She, you know, yes. lets you know who you are. You know what, what you did is not who you are. I tell that's Joshua right. that all the time when something happens. That's not who you are. Let me just tell you who you are. You're a man of God. The word is written on your heart. You you are better than this. You are able to do greater than me, than your daddy, than your mommy. You are able to do so much more. You're an overcomer. You're a conqueror because I believe in him more than he believes in himself at time. Mommy believes in him more than he believes because she's always, you know what? There's life in your tongue. You're speaking it. That's not who you are. You're going to be a man of God. You can be in the NBA if you choose to. You can be a pastor if you choose to. You can be a doctor if you choose to. You are able. I mean, I can see it already in you and you can't even see it. Yes. See, mothers can see things in their kids that the kids can't even see in themselves. Yes. Yeah. That's why mothers... They just believe. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what they see. I believe on the report of the Lord. Yeah. And, and you know that, that belief that mothers have, it, um, listen, when you become a mother, your prayer life goes into a whole nother level. Okay? You, you're, you pray like it's a life and death situation. And quite frankly, it is. Because there's someone out to, that wants to take out your children. And so our belief is not a facade. Listen, we're going to God for, for our children. I'm in my prayer closet praying for my son. And I believe every mother in the deepest parts of their hearts, they are crying out to God for their children because they believe that God has placed them in their life for a reason and a purpose. And they're calling things out that the children don't even see. And they're going to do it behind closed doors. And that's why when they come to you, mom, they're full of ammunition with the right words to say, the positive, positive thinking, um, just being encouraged. And that's why some of us go to mom first. Let me call mom first, see what mom has to say. And mom will go, da 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 I'm like, that's what I needed to hear. Right. So mom, moms will believe for you when you have a lack of belief. Right. So go to mom. Amen. She believes. Yeah, because they believe more than you believe. Yes. They believe in you. They've, they've blessed you. They've birthed you. Amen. So it's important. That's what mothers are so important for. And, and, and let me just go here. Because Father's Day is coming up. But I, I don't like to go through a Mother's Day or a Father's Day without letting everyone know that it, both are just as important. Yes. Yep. Yeah. A man and a woman in marriage is a marriage. That's what gives life. Yes. That's what multiplies. If that's what gives life and multiplies, that's... A blessing unto God. Yes. Amen. Amen. But there are something about mothers that they just believe. And it's nice to hear that when you don't, to be able to call. And then they go back. Well, remember when you didn't believe in this? Remember when you didn't believe he was going to ride your bike without the training wheels? Remember when you, you said you'd never make a basket? Now you're playing in the NBA. Remember when, you, you, son, you can do this. Yes. 
daughter, you can do this. You, you, you're able to. I believe in you. And there's just something about hearing a mom believing in you. But you also have to be in the right frame, mind, yes. mindset, to receive that too. Because too many times we as children, we think we know more, we think we're better, but we really aren't. Amen? We, we, it's just, it's a lie of the enemy. Because there's wisdom within our yes. mothers and our fathers. Amen? Yes. There's wisdom that they want to pour in. It seems like they're trying to jab something down our throat, trying to just, you know what, I don't like it. And we, we end up in the rebellion state. I've done this and I've been there. And then I realize after maturity <laughs> that, you know what, they were just trying to help me. They wanted yes. the best for me. See, some of you aren't listening, but you know you need to. Well, I want to say something. Your first group of your multitude of counsel, like the Bible says, is your parents. Yeah. Your parents have wisdom. And um, I, I believe, and that's what the Bible says, there is wisdom in the multitude of counsel. Right. And your parents have gone through things that you have not gone through. And they can help you avoid right. some very some paths that you can just avoid in your life. And your children will say, thank you for keeping me from that path. Because, you know, I would have definitely got, gone down that road. And there's counsel. There's, I'm sorry, there's wisdom right. in that counsel. So value that counsel in your life. Amen. Amen. And another mother, that, that um, another mother, a trait of a mother is a mother always have, has plans. Amen. Right? Yeah. They always have a plan. For you, yeah. right? Sometimes we don't like that plan, but we don't understand it because uh, we haven't matured enough to know what's like what it's like to live life. Amen. We don't understand what it's like to lose something. We don't understand what it's like to be homeless. We don't understand what it's like to to you know what do without. Amen. A lot of times, because what the family moms will make sure that the kids are taken care of, right? A lot of times, how many times kids don't even understand the pain of losing something, the pain of, of being destroyed, the pain of being mocked, the pain. They, we think we do because, oh, high school, you just don't understand the stress and the pain. But you don't understand what life is yet. <laughs> Let me just tell you, when you get fired, when you're exited out, uh, when you're, you're, you're in the midst of losing your home, when you're in the midst of losing your car, when you're wondering how I'm going to pay for the electric bill, how is the groceries going to get on the table, how am I going to get my education, how am I going to get another job, I mean, you know what, how are we going to get through this yeah. because we just experienced a, a disease or a death or, you know what, but moms always yeah. seem to have a plan. Yeah. And usually the plans start on their knees, amen? Yes, yes. amen. And, and we know the mother of Moses yeah. had a plan. Amen? Yes, she did. Um, I love how her name, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Jochebed, that's Moses' mother, how she planned. You know, there, if you don't know the story, um, there was Pharaoh who sent out an order to kill all the children two years and under. And um, this one lady, Jochebed, which is Moses' mother, she didn't want her son to be murdered with that decree. And so she planned to put this baby in this basket and roll him down the Nile River. And lo and behold, who found him? Pharaoh's daughter right. found him. And then, then, then what I find the most ironic thing is with her plan, God blessed her plan because the baby was found. And then she was paid to nurse him. Afterwards, I'm like, God, you work things out for our good. So, and even though she wasn't able to raise him till he got older, but she turned around, gave him to God, metaphorically speaking, she gave him to God and God turned around. Okay, now you're going to nurse him, even though he's going to be raised with somebody else. So in her plan, God blessed her plan and she was planning. And I wanted to say something too, because you mentioned that, yes, planning begins in our, on our knees, but on a, another practical level, I know someone who... They were going to encounter a month of un the unknown in their housing situation. And for several weeks before that situation, she was trying to come up with 30 meals to make in those 30 days in a crock pot. She was planning for her family. She wasn't thinking about herself. She was thinking about her family. So I, I think about that, and I think about how sometimes mothers are on the dash and on the run trying to get trying to run off with the children, and she barely even gets to sit down and eat. She may eat the leftovers is on the plate. So um, mothers, you know, they run with their plans, and if they surrender their plans to the Lord, let me tell you, it's going to work out. It may not look like, like it, but it's going to work out. It may not have Amen. looked like that for mo Moses' mother, but it worked out for her, for her good because we know the story of Moses. Amen. 
Amen. And, and we, we know the story. You know, she, she had a plan that, that was going to save her, her son. You know, and we know the Lord blessed that plan. We know there was a, a call because she believed there was a call. Yeah. You know what? When a mother believes in a child, then God makes a way for the child. Amen. I, I, that's what you, you have to understand. When you're underneath your, 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 your mom and your dad's home, you know, there's an anointing there. Yes, as there soon is. as you leave, you're on your own anointing. On, that honey. means you have to establish that anointing. That means how you live determines your favor and your anointing. That's right. Let me just tell you, it, it's important. But she had a plan. Yes, she did. And that plan, oh, took her son right to the midst of the enemy. Yes. But God said, that's okay. Sometimes we have to go to the enemy in order to get blessed. Yes. Because there's a purpose and a plan. Yeah. And, and that child came right back to her. She nursed that child. So yeah. you know what? Your, your mom, she has some plans. Amen? Yes. And, and we need to be aware and, and acknowledge that there's wisdom in those yes. plans. Amen? It might not make sense, but you know what? There's wisdom within those plans. There's wisdom not to go out and drink with the fellows and, and get, a, you know, get a DUI. Amen? There's wisdom not to go out and, and just party like crazy, ended up in a car wreck. Amen? Yeah. I, I remember one day that... Um, you know, growing up that uh, there was a party going on and I never was partying, but I was invited, but I didn't go. And there was just wisdom that, you know, moms always have wisdom that, you know, you're not allowed to do this. You're not allowed to do that. Yes. We'll find out the next day that the guy wrapped his car around a pole and I wouldn't have been there the next day if I was in the car. Yeah. Right. Think about it. So it's important. Yeah. It's important. So mothers have plans. Yes, they do. And they're beautiful plans. And you know what? I don't know of a mother that has a plan that wants to harm her children. Right. There are plans to push them and prosper them in a greater level than yeah. where they're at. That's right. And we can see these mothers within the Bible that they have a plan and a purpose from God to push their children into a better life. Amen? Yes. Let me just tell you, I'm going to risk my life because I, I, I have a plan to make sure my son gets to the river. Because I'm going to save him if it costs me my life. Yeah. Have you ever tangled with a mama bear? Do you ever watch Discovery Channel or National Geographic and they show the grizzly bears and here's this male grizzly bear coming out thinking he's all bad. And then he tangles with this mama grizzly. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, it sounds exactly like that. You know, that, that grizzly yeah. bear, that man grizzly bear, it is, he, he's running down the stream. Amen. I'll find another place to find some salmon because I just, you know, she's all, she's all up to something. Right? Yeah. Because th that's, that's their plan is to protect, mm -hmm. yes. to prosper, to make a way yes. for their children. Amen? Amen? And we can see this within Proverbs 1. It says, you know, my son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. Right? Yes. For they will be graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck. And then another beautiful trait of a mother is mothers always keep their promises. Amen? We see this within the Bible, and we can read this within Hannah, 1 Samuel 1.11. It says that, Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And then we can read in 1 Samuel 1, 24 through 28, it says, Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bulls, uh, one ephah of flour, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered a bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worship the Lord. Amen. Think about it. A mom always keeps her promises, right? Yes. How many times do we think our moms doesn't keep her promises, right? How many times do we think a mom's broken a promise? But we didn't get what we want in the toy owl. But it really wasn't a promise. The promise was, is I'm not letting you go to the toy owl because my promise is you're going to stay safe. You're staying right here with me. 
I, my promise is I, I'm going to protect you. I'll give up my life for you. My promise is, you know what, I'm going to help you and push you. I'm going to help you with your schoolwork. I'm going to be there when no one else is going to be there. I'm going to pray for you when no one else is praying for you. I'm going to believe and have faith in you. I, that's, that's, the, that's a promise, amen? amen? Keeps her promise to the Lord, but keeps her promise to the kids that, you know what, I want the best for you. I, I'm, I'm not doing things to hurt you. I'm not doing things to harm you. I'm not doing things to hold you down. Uh, Man, I'm I'm promising you. I birthed you. I put up with you. I'm going to make sure that I'm with you, that you're going to, I'm not giving up on you. That's a promise. I always love you. I think that's why women are so close to God and mothers is because they just have this, this love, more like what God does, that, you know what, no matter how many times you hurt a mother, they're still going to love you. Yes. They still love you. Yes. There might be some different rules, some different standards. There might be some trust that you have to earn back, but they'll always love you. Yes. That's what God does. God has tests us, right? God's allowed us to go through things, right? Not that he, he didn't love us. But he loved us unconditionally, but there was things that we had to establish. Amen? Yeah. Yes. Amen. And I love this, that their plan goes so far more than what we understand or what we realize. Yeah. Think about it. Now, I just take a moment to pause because I think some of us need to realize that. See the plans that our moms have for us. We didn't like those at one time, did we? We didn't like going to college, did we? We didn't like going and getting a job, did we? We didn't like waiting for marriage to have the hallelujah party, right? We didn't, right? We didn't like the protection. Why did you keep me at home? Or why did you do this? We did well, because that's my promise to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm watching you. <laughs> I, I re- can see you yeah. through walls. I can yes. see you through the buildings. I have x-ray eyes. I hear all things. I know all things. Yeah. Well, I, I just recently heard this one statement. Some some mom said, she goes, I'd rather you be upset with me and and hate me in your idea of hate then me not protect you. That's right. I'm going to protect you. And you're going to be kicking and screaming about whatever idea that, that was happening. I'd rather you hate me than me not protect you. Right. And so I think about Hannah. She made a promise to God. She said, if I have this son, I'm going to give him back to you, God. Now think about that commitment. Think about that promise she made to God. I made a promise to God. Okay, now I've birthed this child. He's been in my stomach for how many months? I have this this bond with my child. Now I need to surrender to him. I need to give him back to the Lord. That is a huge commitment. And she honored God in that promise. Did she miss out on the toddler stages, the adolescent years? She probably could have told God, God, I'm going to miss out on all of this. But no, she promised God. She gave him back to God like she said she would. Right. And he was raised in the temple and he was a mighty man of God. Right. And when mothers promise to the Lord, that I'm going to raise my kids according to the word of God, kids aren't going to like it. Nope. But it's the best thing for them. Yeah. And when you raise up a child, what does the word say? (laughs) They're going to, if they depart, they're going to come back. Amen? Yes. There's just something about mothers. Mothers can instill fear too. Amen? That's their plan, (laughs) right? They have a plan to do that. My mom did. I remember the first time, you real young, first lie, the only lie that I ever said. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, but I remember that, and, and, and uh, yeah, I did it. And then she's like, well, Jesus isn't going to be happy, and there's going to, you know, of course, she has to add the monsters. Monsters are going to come visit you tonight. Well, I was about five minutes in that room, and she was outside the hallway just waiting. Yeah, she knew exactly what she said, that it was gonna, I'm going to come right back out. Okay, Mommy, I don't want no monsters. I don't want to. Well, there's no monsters, but Jesus knows. Yeah. Teach she had a plan children the to make fear sure. of the Lord. Exactly. She had a plan. That to teach me, obedience brings the blessing. Yes. That you have to have reverence to the Lord. Yes. And I remember that to this day. That's probably one of the biggest things I remember. Jesus is right there. Jesus was in my room when I told the lie. Jesus was outside there when I said said the lie to my mom. It was just like, you know what, right? And we recently had a conversation about teaching children the fear of the Lord. Because you can eliminate a lot of behavior issues. If you teach them that they are in the presence of God everywhere they're at, 
they don't escape God. He's always there watching you. Why you when you decided to make that bad choice, God's presence is there. Right. When you teach them the fear of God, they will fear God so much. You don't have to worry about them doing anything to you. They yeah. will they will tremble in their own skin by themselves. They'll convict themselves. The Holy Spirit's doing it. When you teach them the fear of the right. Lord. And there's been times in my life that I've made the right decisions, not because I wanted to, but because I knew God was right there watching. Yeah. There was that reverence. There was that and fear. And mama was, will know. Yeah, well, of course, because God always lets mama know first. Yeah. You know, you just want to make sure it stops at mama and it doesn't go to dada because <laughs> it's a hurt. <laughs> Amen. But then we have another mother that we want to uh, talk about. Another mother trait is mothers have hope. Amen. Yes. Mary, the one that gave what? Jesus, the birth of Jesus to each and every one of us. Mary that carried around hope within her womb, amen? That when hope showed up, uh, Elizabeth's baby, oh, John the Baptist leapt. Do you understand what it means to, to, that word leapt? That means it was a stillborn. Leapt in the Hebrew means that it came back alive. Amen. That when hope walked in the room, that he came back alive. See, when something about a mother that has this hope for you. When you come and you want to talk about some dreams that didn't seem to work out, you leave with hope, amen, amen. that you are able. She was a, a woman that carried around hope, the hope of the world, yes. amen? Yes. So this is what mothers do, is they give hope to their children, their sons, their daughters, to everyone else around them because they're carrying that hope. Yeah. That's good. Their hope in you is greater than the hope that you have. It's their hope that's getting you through situations. Amen. There are times where you're like, I feel like my mother's praying for me. <laughs> like someone is praying for me because I have some, some Superman strength right now spiritually. Don't put it past her. She is praying for you. Your mother is praying for you. Yep. And it says in Luke 31, 131. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. See, I believe every mother gave birth to hope. Yes. Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ, amen? The hope of the world. But she has hope for every child that she's given birth to. Hope that they're going to serve the Lord. Hope they're going to turn around. Hope they're going to make something of themselves. Yeah. And as a mother, we can't give up that hope. Amen? No. We can't. We can't. Mothers, don't give up that hope because it's your hope that's getting th your children through this. Yes. It's your hope that's getting you through this. There might be some difficult times, but you know what? There's mothers within the Bible that went through some difficult times. Amen? Yeah. I mean, how would you like to be the mother? And then all, all you know that here you have a son that's all powerful and until he gave up the secret and cut his hair and now he's blind because they pulled out his eyes. But look what he done at the end. Put one hand on a pillar and the other hand on the pillar and all pagans came down in the midst of the Colosseum because there was a hope, amen? Yeah. And mothers carry that hope for their children. Yes. Mothers have hope. They've given birth to hope. See, it says... In Leviticus 19.3, every one of you shall re reverend, rever, revere. revere his mother and his father and keep, his, keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. We give honor. It says in Proverbs 31, strengthen and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in, the, in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. She watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Husbands, let's praise the woman that we married that we call mother to our children. Amen. That's why we have this day. Right? Anytime you want to give up, Think of your mother. She's in, she hasn't given up on you. She has hope for you. Amen? It says in 3 John 4, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth. And that's what every mother has for their children. Amen? Amen. 
that they're going to walk in the truth of God. Yes. Amen? Yes. And you know what? We have some great mothers here. We have mothers of hope, mothers of patience, mothers that had plans, mothers that, that has the best for their, their children, mothers that aren't giving up, mothers that are just, I mean, just, we have some great mothers here. Yeah. And I, I, I agree, there's some mothers that, that could easily just give up their hands, but you haven't. You haven't. Right. And you choose not to. And that's awesome. And because you choose not to, that means I know your kids are coming around. Amen. Amen? Yes. Because of your faith, your hope, yeah. your desires, your plans. Yes. It's never too late. No. Now, I, I, know what, I know what the enemy says. Well, you're old and you're getting up there and your kids are old and you know what, you did, you know what, preach the gospel because I've heard this in the ministry too many times when people come, but I didn't raise my kids up. It's never too late. You're doing it now. You're praying for them. You're standing in the gap. You, you're a new yes. person. You're a new creation. Let me just tell you, you know what? God honors that. Oh, God's making a way. Amen. Yes. It's never, ever too late. That's right. God can do anything. Right? So we have some beautiful mothers. Beautiful mothers. And I believe that's every mother's hope is to see their children walk in the truth. Amen. Good job, honey. That's not for a good job. It's Holy Spirit. You have any last words? That was good. You've been very quiet the whole time. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> no, I think that just honor your mother. That's one of my favorite scriptures. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. That right there is powerful to me that to rest assured at night that your children are walking in truth. And if they're not walking in truth, don't give up hope. Be encouraged that God hears your prayers. God knows your deepest desires and your, the, your cry at night. The Bible says that he bottles your tears. I know it's, it's, it's impossible to believe that every child represented in this room are walking in truth. But I'm here to encourage you that there is a God that's not asleep on your children. He's wide awake on your children. And so I want to encourage you with that last part is that it is a blessing to know that your children are walking in truth. Keep pushing. Keep on believing. Stay on your knees. Believe and trust in the Lord. Right. And as mothers, it's easy to get down at times, right? And that you wonder, man, there's no one there to pick me up. And I want to just pray for you because God has you. Amen. God's giving you the strength. God's walking with you. Right? And we're standing on his promises because we have mothers that stand on their promises yes. and the promises of God. Yes. So we're believing with you. We have great mothers. And we're going to see God do great works. Amen. Yes. I hope that you enjoyed the message today. And I hope that you gave your heart to Jesus Christ. And if you're here and you have not, and you would like to right now, all you have to do is ask for forgiveness of your sins and receive Jesus into your heart as Lord and Savior and you are saved and set apart. That's all it is. And I want you to email me. I want you to email me so I can be praying with you, that I can be believing with you, that we can equip you, that we can stay in contact with you because I want to welcome you to the family. And while you're here watching right now, make sure you check us out at Peak Worship and make sure you get involved with all of our social medias. That means you like us, you follow us, check everything out about us so you can get plugged in. Amen. And we will see you next time.